So what happens if we have two waves that are very similar, but not quite identical? Well, we can see what happens from this diagram over here. They're producing a bit of a pattern. In this picture, we have a white wavelength and a red wavelength, a white wave and a red wave rather, and they have slightly different wavelengths. We can see that the peaks of the white wave are a little bit closer together than the peaks of the red wave. And this means that even though they start out in phase at the middle, as we get further and further away from the middle, the red and white waves get, white waves get further and further out of phase. And eventually, right at the very edges, they're cancelling each other out. So we get a pattern that's alternately loud and soft. Right, in the middle it's loud, at the edge it's soft. But then it will come back, as if we're going from here, and eventually it will get loud again. So over time we'll hear a sound that gets loud, soft, loud, soft. And we'll get this pulsing or throbbing effect. In physics we call this effect a beat. We'll hear an example of it in a little while. So beats are easiest to hear when the difference between the wavelengths is very small. Because if we have only a very small wavelength between the red wave and the white wave, then it means that the beat will be very, very long. Whereas if there's a big difference between the two different waves, then the beat might happen so quickly that we can't even pick it up. So what does a beat sound like? Well, let's listen to an example. So here we're going to listen to what the white wave and the red wave might sound like. Then we're going to listen to them both together. The white wave might sound something like this. Right? Pretty boring sine wave sound, but it's easy to work with, so we'll have to live with it. Now let's listen to the red wave. Now, these sounds at first seem pretty much identical, right? But that's just because they have such similar frequencies. The, one, one of the sounds is only a tiny, tiny bit higher, uh, only a small frequency higher than the red wave. And because their frequencies are so similar, our ear picks them up and says that they're both practically identical. But they're not, and we can hear that if we listen to both waves played at once, which will give us this pattern here. Let's have a listen. So as you can hear, we have this sort of throbbing sound effect of uh, the two waves played together. So this means that it's possible to tell whether two sounds are identical or not by playing them both at the same time. And if we get an effect like this, then we know that the waves must not be identical. So it turns out that we can use this property of beats in order to tune musical instruments. If you're playing in a large orchestra or even just a small band, it's important that everyone thinks that the musical note A, for example, is the same for every instrument. If one musical note has an A that's a bit higher, then for another instrument, then it means we'll get a bit of chaos when they both try to play the same note. If we don't have a particularly good ear for telling pitches apart, we're able to use beats to help us out. So if a note from the instrument is not perfectly in tune with another similar note, such as one you might get from a tuning fork or an electronic tuner, then if we listen carefully, we'll be able to hear a beat between these two sounds, just like we heard before. And if we know that there's a beat, we know that we're not quite in tune. So we can adjust the tuning of the instrument until we don't hear any beat. And that means, of course, the instrument and the other source of sound, like a tuning fork, will be exactly in tune. That means that if everyone tunes from the same tuning fork, then everyone in the orchestra will have exactly the same notes for their instruments, which, as you can imagine, will be very handy. Which is correct. When a sound wave interferes with another sound wave constructively, the resulting wave is louder or softer than the first wave. Well, the name of the interference, constructive, sort of gives it away, doesn't it? We're constructing a wave that's bigger than the first waves. So that means we're getting a resulting wave that is louder than the first wave. Well, I'm sure you can guess what the second part of this question is going to be. 
When a sound wave interferes with another wave destructively, the resulting wave is louder or softer than the first wave. Destructive means, of course, that the waves are destroying each other. They're cancelling each other out. And that means that we get a resulting wave that is softer than the first wave.